of thought about, I don't, you know, if you've been following me for a little while, you know that I hold a little bit of a different perception on how energy works and how to manifest and create. And these are one of the things that they wanted to talk about because humanity, not just like the United States, but the entire of humanity on the planet over the next week or so is going to be creating using their creative energy to map out what 2023 is going to look like for them and what if i said to you which is ironic right which is what we're going to talk about today what if i said to you that everybody on the planet well not not everybody but the majority of people on the planet are doing it backwards right we're all manifesting and creating new year on new year's eve with your new year's resolutions but it's backwards and when it's backwards you don't really realize that you're kind of assuring your successful failure and when spirit kind of like came in with that i was like ooh, <laughs> ooh tell me more about that and so and not only just about that but how how are we going to turn that around right um which is part of the work that we already do it's just in this type of container so how can we make our manifestations for 2023 that we want to create and i'm going to call it creations now um, how do we do our creations in a way in which it is mutually assured success and let's flip it on its head and so we wrote a post that we wrote that we repost the same post every single year about New Year's resolutions. And when you look at the word resolution and you separate it, I'm going to type it in the comments so you can like physically with your eyes see exactly what I'm talking about. When you separate the word resolution from the RE to the SO, you have a re-solution. So everybody on the planet come New Year's Eve is re-solutioning old problems. So in 2022, we had our challenges. We had things that um, we'd like to move through. We'd have things that we'd like to end, things that we'd like to close out. Um, and move forward from right um or get some solutions to but you don't really want to re-solution it right because re-solution is like redo it so do we really want to walk into 2023 and redo 2022 i don't <laughs> i don't know about you but I certainly do not want to redo 2022. So when we re-solution, right, or make a resolution for the next coming year, we're really saying, okay, this is what I'm going to redo to get a different solution, to get a different outcome. Stephanie's has a totally great concept. It, it's true. I mean, that's what they're that's what they're like. They're telling us. They're they're showing us. It's like, you know, maybe we should do something different this time, right? Instead of redoing the same things over and over and over again. Hence the whole hamster wheel effect, which is just cycling and cycling and cycling. So, in this case we're going to create or manifest whatever word that you want to use instead of resolution we're going to manifest and create but in order to do that there are a couple of little mindset tweaks that we have to shift in order to actually have it be very successful um yeah so the first point that they wanted to bring up and i'm reading i have notes because i sat with spirit today and like what do you want to talk about what is this and i'm like yeah, these are really good. So the first thing is doing things the opposite way. That's what that's what we're doing. That's what we've been taught to do. The way that we've been taught to resolution or make a resolution is actually backwards. 
energetically. It is backwards. It is looking externally, right, at what is not working um, or what is not here or what is lacking and then expecting a different solution to come in because you put more focus on it. Now, anybody who knows law of attraction work or mindset work, anything that you focus on it grows and expands. You put energy on it, it grows and expands. So if every year we are focusing on, as we've been taught to resolution or make a resolution for, if every time every year we're focusing on how things aren't working or what we're lacking and we're saying, I'm going to redo this in 2023 and I'm going to put all of my energy and all of my attention on it, <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? You're going to get the same thing. You're feeling stuck and you want to, you're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make a resolution that I'm not going to be stuck. I'm going to take action, but you're focusing on all the areas and the ways that you are stuck. You're going to be more stuck. There is no solution because you're redoing that same energy. Okay. So that, that's kind of like a first piece. So Stephanie says so many people don't think that this is great. Oh, good. I'm glad this is resonating for you. Excellent. Yay. Okay. So when you resolution, resolutioning is usually things that you say that you want to accomplish and a solution for it, right? With that's, we just discussed that. That's the old problem. I'm just reading off my notes. Okay. So what spirit wants us to do is kind of, here's a new perception. Let's kind of take a look at it from a place of start living. I like use creating, but start living or creating in the outcome of what it is that you de desire and not in the problem or the lack of it. Let me say that again. Start creating or living in the outcome of what it is that you want or desire instead of living in the problem or the lack of it. And then trying to fix it from there. Right? Again, the more energy we put on something, the more it grows and expands. So if we're focusing on the outcome of what it is that we desire for 2023, and we're going into 2023, with the, this is the outcome that I am creating for 2023. And, oh, I'm getting chills right now. And I'm feeling into it. And it's a high vibe. And I can see it. I can feel it. I can hear it. I can walk in the energy of it. I can feel and see all the money coming in, all the partners coming in, everything that you want coming in. Then we put that energy on that and that is what grows and expands. Or you can do it the human way. And the human way sounds like this. Okay. I don't have any money. I don't have a boyfriend. So I'm going to resolution that. I'm going to do a resolution that says I'm going to work harder because I don't have any money. I'm going to go and do things that I don't like like go to the gym or go on a diet um, in order to become more attractive to other people or I'm going to do all these things that I don't really want to do but that's going to be the solution for this problem that I have okay and every time I think about it every time I get up in 2023 and I think about I have to go to the gym or I have to eat that salad and that that burger your energy is just going to go super closed off. Your energy is expanding the problem. You're struggling with your, your resolution and nothing happens. And that's why people usually give up February 1st. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Can you feel the difference in the energy of the two examples? Right? In, in this example, there is stress. <laughs> I'm constantly looking at everything that I'm missing out on and that I don't have and I'm stressed about it. 
I have to do things, do things in order to change my behavior. I can't have the things that I want because I have to do eat this salad because that's what's going to help me get my goals. That's mental energy. And then when nothing happens after 30 days, you're tired, you're frustrated, you're stressed, and we give up. It's because we're doing it backwards. We're not creating or manifesting from that space. We're really just locking in things that we don't want. We're just locking it in with that energy. So when we start living in the outcome and not in the problem, then we expand the energy, we allow it to grow, and then we are open, our energy goes, Oh, yes, this feels so much better. I'm so open. Yes. And then what happens is things that are a match to that vibrational living in the outcome are just like, oh, and they all just start coming through. And it feels like you're not even doing anything. You're just having fun living in the outcome. Now, granted, you are taking guided advice, right? So I have a really good example for you. This is a great example. How ironic that I have this example. So for me, at the end of the evening, after dinner around 8 o'clock, I like to have a snack. And so um, I turn off, you know, whatever I'm doing. I go downstairs, I have a snack. And part of living in the outcome is living in um, better health and better wealth, better vitality for my body, dropping a few pounds for the year. Like I'm feeling like all this skinny kind of energy coming through. And it feels really good. And I'm like open with the space of it. And I go downstairs to the refrigerator I think you know I made this beautiful apple pie for um, Christmas that nobody ate because I made another pie and everybody loved it and that would just kind of went out the door so I'm going to go downstairs I'm going to have this apple pie and as I'm looking down the stairs I can hear in my head things like is this really going to support my goal (laughs) is this really going to help me here and I'm like I'm feeling apple pie. I'm just going with the flow, right? I'm going with the flow and I'm following that outcome energy. And I hit the refrigerator. I put my hand on the door and I hear in my head, eat the egg roll. Now you have to understand, I make my own egg rolls. So they're not deep fried. They're not like bad for you, right? They're made with top quality, um, beef and cheese can I make cheese steak egg rolls because I'm from the Philadelphia area and I air fry them so I hit that refrigerator door and I hear eat the egg roll and I was like oh I stood there for a minute and I'm like because I'm very sensitive to sugar and apple pie was like all sugar I'm like oh that's a really good idea eat the egg roll so I take the egg roll instead I go upstairs with my little snack and at the end of my snack, I'm like, oh my gosh, that was such a better choice. But I wasn't focused on the problem of, you know, I could have been like, oh, I'm going to eat this apple pie, but it's going to be really bad for me. I'm going to be sick. The sugar is going to make me, uh, right? And then you eat it (laughs) and it does all of those things, right? But instead... I was open, right? My energy was open. I'm living in the outcome. And because I'm living in the outcome in this high vibe energy of feeling good and being open to being guided, when I put my hand on that door, I got a different solution. A different solution that supported me better. Okay, just keeping that in mind. Start living in the outcome of things and then allowing spirit to guide you, allowing for that, you know, if you're if you're uh, energetically sensitive, intuitive, psychic, whatever, allowing those hits to come through that offers you a different choice. Now, I could have said, no, I don't want that egg roll. I want to eat that apple pie. But I'm open to being guided. I am open to direction. So when that direction came in, I took it. And it was, for me, a better solution. Okay? Let me know if that makes sense. So the other thing about solutions, this is what um, Spirit is, is talking about. 
Solutions allow for a cycle of completion. Right? So when you get a solution, when I get a solution, when I get that egg roll, I have I have completed that cycle. Right? I got the solution. I'm living in the outcome. And just for that moment, just for that moment, that solution, not the whole solution. I didn't become like 120 pounds after that egg roll. I wish, but I didn't. Um, but I got a solution in that morning, but it stopped that cycle. Right? So when you get that solution of living in the outcome, you start getting things that stop the cycle of living in the problem. But when you're still focused on living in the problem, there is no completion. Because it's not completed. You're still cycling it. Hamster wheel, still cycling it. How do I do this? How do I resolve this? Where is it gonna go? Where am I gonna get the guidance from? I have to go to the gym. I have to eat this. I have to do that. I don't feel good. I'm stressed. This is too much. I wanna quit. There's no completion. You just go round and round in a circle. That's why people make the same resolution every year. I'm going to lose weight. I'm too fat. I'm going to lose weight. That's why gym memberships every year in January go up. Like almost like 400%. <laughs> it's like everybody makes the same resolution, same resolution. And then by February 1st, the gym memberships all go down. Right? Because those are big, huge changes, but they're also big, huge changes that nobody ever made in their minds. It's just action. And it's not even necessarily divinely right guided action. It's just action that you think you need to take because somebody told you you needed to do that in order to get to your goal. Somebody told you to focus on the things that you don't have so hard and then put action and behavior behind it so hard that every year it keeps you in the same cycle over and over and over again. So spirit is inviting you to live in the outcome energy, not the problem energy. You can still go to the gym in the outcome energy. I'm living in the outcome energy and I'm feeling good. And then you might get that hit. Go to the gym, go take a walk, take your dog out, go garden, go for a bike ride. Okay, okay. But then it's fun. It's not something that you have to do. It's not stressful, but it also keeps you off the hamster wheel. It helps to bring in completion in a way in which is not stressful, in a way in which keeps you on your trajectory, keeps you in your right mindset, and becomes, in essence, easier to accomplish. The other piece about cycle of completion, and that's just like, you know, we've talked a lot of ex about examples in regards to like, oops, I lost my light, um, weight loss, partner stuff, right? But what if I want to use or, or resolve or complete something that is energetic? So maybe it's like, maybe I want to heal something. Maybe I have a body part that I, I want a little, I want to address. Um, I talk about this a lot in the key codes where we set up higher realm containers for healing. Um, and we outline all of the processes that you do in order to be able to actually set up a healing chamber for yourself. Um, you can use the higher realms. You don't have to always rely on your brain or on your mental capacity. You can use the higher dimensions to do things like bring in healing. And I share this story a lot. Um, I had lower back pain um, probably 20 years ago now. That was so incapacitating that my I couldn't walk, first of all. I couldn't even, I couldn't lay down and get up out of my bed. And my chiropractor was not able to help me and was going to refer me to um, an orthopedist for surgery. I'm like, there is no freaking way anybody's cutting my back open, <laughs> period. <laughs> for any reason whatsoever, right? I've heard too many horror stories about back surgery. So I decided 
I was going to do this energetically and I was going to use the higher realms to do it because that's my, uh, what is it? My zone of genius. That's where my craft is. That's where my skill is. That's what I know how to do things really well. Like I can use the higher realms to reflect and impact this one by setting up the appropriate container and making the appropriate requests. So why would I want to let some strange person, I don't know, who has a degree in whatever, cut open my back and let's see, <laughs> let's see if it works. No, I don't think so. <laughs> so back then I created a course for myself and I did it every day. We looked and explored all the ways in which the root of the problem was happening. Whose energy was it? Was I holding it? Was it this life? Was it, was it past life? And then I went, that's too much work. And that's also living in the problem. So I started living in the outcome. I'm like, okay. And I was only able to do that because I was turning it over to someone else who I knew could help me. And that someone else was my team, my guides, my soul, my source. In this container, I set up for myself in the higher realms. So when you set up containers such as this, it allows your soul to really resolve the issues for you instead of you holding on to it and trying to manage it and look at it and examine it and use all your brain work with it, right? Your soul has the capacity to access anything in the multiverse in order to be able to help itself and you. Anything, anywhere, at any time. So I tell this story a lot. I've set up a healing uh, container for myself every single night for three months. And this was 20 years ago, so the energy is a little different. Right now, the energy is super fast. It's super speedy. Manifestations are happening, happening almost instantaneously. But back then, the energy was slower. It was taking about six months for things to show up. And I was using this fandangled new process, <laughs> which cut that time in half. But three months is still three months to live with pain. So I think it's actually, yeah, three months. I think it was three months. It might have been six weeks, actually. It was three months for when Abraham came in to ask me about alignment. I think it was six weeks for this. Okay, six weeks. Was it six weeks or three months? Six weeks. Okay, sorry, my bad. All my stories get <laughs> entangled. Six weeks, healing container every day. And I did it religiously every single night. I actually even created a um, MP3 so I didn't have to keep saying it in my head. Because sometimes, you know, when you go to sleep, you just want to crash, right? And I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't crash. I got to set up this container. I'm like, I'm too tired. So I would put it on my phone and I'd press play <laughs> and it would do it for me, right? Did that every night for six weeks. On this last day, the last day, if you will, I was in that state of waking up, but you're not really quite awake. You probably, I call it like the fugue state, right? Where you're not quite awake, but you're not fully asleep, but you have conscious awareness that you're in this kind of medium state. Um, you're still probably dreaming a little bit more actively. It's kind of like the last dream you have before you awaken, which you um, can remember with a lot of clarity. It was one of those types of things. And this dream was me. I was at a party. I was having fun. I was probably like, you know, visually, I was like 12 years old. You know, me, 12 years old. And my higher self, soul, essence, energy, whatever you want to call it, showed up with a couple of guides, right? She looks a lot older, a lot mature, you know, very much taller even. And I came over and she was like, let me see your back. <laughs> right? So I turned around and then I could see that she was looking at my back and trying to knit it together. Like it was like a hole in my back. And she was trying to knit it together with um, knitting needles. Right. At that point in time, it was very poignant for me because I had just started learning how to knit. Um, 
And he made all these blankets because, you know, it's like, this is really fun. <laughs> um, so she was trying to knit my back together and she made like a couple of stitches and then she stopped. And then she looked to one of the guides and was like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to do this. Like, this is like messed up. I don't know how to do this. So the next thing I know is like one of the guides come over, comes over and takes a look at my little back, right? And... I hear this really deep guttural tone of um, it's like um, like really low and loud and and it was really like I, nothing that I've ever heard before. And as that ohm is coming in, I'm starting to awaken in my bed, right? I'm starting to come back into my body and I'm starting to awaken. And as I open my eyes, the toning dissipates. And of course, I'm like, wow, that's, that's really weird. <laughs> but the next thing I know is I get up out of bed and my back pain is gone. Gone. 100% gone. Gone. Like, I can't explain that to you. I mean, like, you take that for what it is, but gone. And the only thing that I can tell you is that I set up those higher realm healing containers asking for a solution, okay, to that energy. Not a, not a resolution, not a redo. I don't want to redo it. I want it, like, resolved, right? And then in six weeks, it was gone. Living in the outcome. The other piece about living in the outcome and not living in the problem is when you allow or turn over that energy or that issue to your source. Your not, energy is not only redirected from the problem, right? Because we're not looking over here, we're over here now. It allows you to release any attachments to the outcome. And that's what we're talking about, really. And this is where a lot of people get screwed up with manifestation and money, anything really, is that we're attached to the outcome. It has to show up in this way. Where is it? I don't see it. It's been six weeks. It hasn't shown up, right? Because that redirects your energy back to focusing on the problem it's not here yet i don't have it where is it so when you're allowing yourself to in this particular case like in this higher realm container when you allow yourself to throw it upstairs you're not attached to the outcome because you know your source your your higher self your soul whatever you want to call it is taking care of it you made the request here is the request. Now I release it to you. Now, granted, there may be some things that need to shift up high, right? Six weeks it took to reshift and recalibrate things down here in order to get my back to to resolve. But there, but I wasn't like focusing on it. It was like I'm done. I can't fix this. I've gone to the doctors. I've taken the medicine. I'm just throwing it upstairs into this higher realm container in six weeks. We had a solution. So when you release the attachment, again, visually what that looks like when you release the attachment is an open energy field. Open energy field to receive, 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 receive. When you're attached to the problem, there's a closed energy field. So anything that's starting to come in is nope. Nope, 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 nope. Because you're still focused here. The other thing is solutions like this don't always... So when, you, when you're living in the outcome and you're looking for the solution, right? When you're living in the outcome and you're hoping for the solution of this, you're releasing the attachment and you want all the energy to come, come through, doesn't necessarily mean that everybody gets a solution, Okay. Just because you have a problem doesn't mean you automatically get a solution like I did for my back, right? 
And what does that mean? Solutions can be or can come in in the way in which you need them to show up, right? For me, my back thing took six weeks and it was six weeks because I was probably processing a lot of things that I didn't know about up high, down low, purging, shifting, right? Things that I was not consciously aware of. And it takes that time in order to be able to get from week one to week six. So depending upon what you're asking to be resolved, just remember solutions when you have an open field, solutions can come in as inspired actions, inspired clarity, direction, other ways in which you're being guided towards your desire. And that example I use with the refrigerator, eat the egg roll, right? That's not a solution for my weight loss, right? But it's a little solution to the moment that I was having in that time space continuum, that little moment, right? So sometimes solutions come in and they're momentarily solutions and sometimes they come in and they're big solutions. But if your energy is closed, you're not getting any solutions. Sorry, nope. This energy is all about joining the gym January 1st and leaving it February 1st. There's nothing that can come in and it's stressful and it weighs heavy on you and it plays all of those stories that you've been told. So in short, when you are looking at creating or manifesting for 2023 because we're not resolutioning unless, unless if I haven't convinced you to not resolution let me know in the comments but allow me to say that you don't need to resolution there's nothing to redo are you going to have the same issues in 2023 maybe so how do I get rid of them Elizabeth you don't Everybody is focused so much on trying to fix themselves. You are not broken. You are living in the problem, not the outcome. That is what really keeps people stuck, is a mindset of perception of how to resolve or resolution issues that come up. We live focusing on the problem. Every single person on this planet, except for maybe those who are a bit more awakened or enlightened, or maybe you, now that you've kind of heard us talk a little bit about it, are going into 2023 with all of these re-solutions, all of these things that they're going to redo to get a better solution for in 2023. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're going to be living in the outcome of the problem at hand. Yeah, okay, I have a problem, I have an issue. I'm not gonna re-solution it, I'm not gonna redo it. I'm gonna start living in the outcome of it. This is manifestation, this is creation. I'm going to create the outcome of the issue that I have and I'm going to live in that energy and I'm going to use the higher dimensions in order to help shift and impact me here in this dimension because number one that happens faster than any mental work that you can do number two it's less stressful I don't have to obsess about my problems because I can, number three, turn it over in a container and allow my higher self, source, God, creator, whatever it is that you want to call it, to help me resolve it. I don't have to be here in this dimension with my blinders on, nothing else but what my problem is and how it's impacting and affecting my life.
What fun is that? Right? That's not fun. So when we talk about this type of work, even though it sounds like, ooh, higher dimensions, <laughs> it's all energy. We live in a multidimensional universe. There are, we, we have a time-space continuum that has many layers of dimensional realities here on the planet. And we are very, very unique in being able to have this position here in the physical dimension. Like you here in this form has so much power to be able to utilize and access those other dimensions to change, shift, and impact the dimension that you're residing in now at a faster, elevated rate. Which one you want to do? Okay. So the guides are like, they don't really believe you. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So I love experiential um, types of work where I can experience things and be like, oh my gosh, I felt that. And so I took a minute here and the guides were like, yeah, they're, they're going to need to experience what you just said because they don't get it. Let me know if you get it. If you get it, let me know. But they're saying they don't really, they don't really get it. <laughs> Stephanie, does any of your coursework teach the container process? Yes, we have a six module um, signature program. It's called the key codes. And the key codes is um, the step-by-step -step instructions on why and how these containers work and step-by-step -step instruction on how to set it up and utilize them. Um, that's, those are the um, processes that I use to heal my back. Um, this time around, I use it to heal my gut. Um, and there was something else I used to heal it, heal something, and I can't remember what it was. You're welcome. Okay, um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a, a quick process because I want you to experience what I'm saying, right? I could tell you all about the higher dimensions and the multiple realms and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you could sit there and just be, you know, roll your eyes, whatever, Elizabeth. But if I could show you, you could feel it within yourself, within your own energy, about what it is that I'm talking about. It'll be, it'll be one of those anchoring moments. Um, you don't have to participate if you don't like to. Um, but the, we're going to activate a specific vibration in your energy field. Well, actually, thank you. They're saying, no, we're not. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yes. Okay. It's just language. We're going to model to you a vibration on how to activate this specific frequency in your, in our own energy body. And then it's going to empathically impact yours using the higher realms. Okay. And they're saying that's more correct. Okay, so um, we're going to do that. The vibration that we would like to bring in for 2023, 2023 is freedom. Okay, so I want you to um, just kind of tune into that energy of freedom and what that means to you. And again, what we're going to do is it's basically in about two seconds, me, my guides, and my invisible people here, we're going to connect in the higher realms with your energy body, your soul, and your team, and your guides. And we're going to show you how to do this by accessing one of those higher dimensional realities and show, show you up here in this higher dimensional container how that shifts and then wait for it to come in and impact you here so you'll actually feel it in your body okay um if you're good for that just let me know type in the comments you're good to go uh just don't want to make you know make sure that uh we're all good to go if you don't want to receive it that's fine just say no and you can still chill and not receive it just be like yeah no thank you <laughs> but i will invite you to at least um experience it for yourself it is a mind-blowing experience if you've never experienced it before so it, it'll be like whoa it'll be like a whoa moment okay okay good to go stephanie's good to go 
All right, so I'm just going to invite you to take a deep breath in. Pens down. Don't even look at me. We're all going to close our eyes just for a second. Bring all of your... Oh, Jennifer Daly. Hello, Jennifer. Welcome, welcome. She is good to go. Okay. <sighs> Relax. Shake it up. Eyes closed. Hands on your lap, if you like. Palms up. You can have feet on the floor, but it doesn't really matter. And in this moment, I'm just going to invite you to pull all of your energy back out of every time, space, continuum, dimension, and reality. Back to your divine line, that tube of light that front runs right in front of your spine in a clean, cleared, recalibrated, whole and healed state and into this current breath of now. Now, some of you just, oh, whew, there you go. You might have just felt a shift right there. And we didn't even do anything yet. <laughs> you just recalibrated your energy back on your own lines. Okay. And so now let me you want to activate first. Okay. So now I'm just going to bring in the energy of freedom for myself because I'm going to show this to your energy bodies. <laughs> okay. And now all of your energy is like, how did you just do that? Okay, we're going to show you how. Here we go. I'm going to invite you at the level of your higher self, your body, Davis, higher self, which is the consciousness of your human physical form, and your team, which is the energy consciousness that surrounds you in another dimension, to engage and locate, work with your energetic fields, to engage and locate everywhere you may have given away or placed your freedom externally on other people, places, things in any time, space, continuum, dimension, or reality. <clears throat> and to go and get it. To lift, to find it first, and then to lift that freedom code that is completely and uniquely yours, calibrated for you, your body and your team and lift it up and off everything and everyone there you go oh here it comes and bring it back to you at the level of your higher self soul god creator body deva team your body and your team are two separate consciousnesses so we have to give them two separate sets of instructions there you go to clean it clean these codes clean these nuggets clean them clear them of anybody's energy anyone's except your own unique soul's energy recalibrate them to your own soul's unique frequency light codes heal them because i'm sure they've probably been damaged if we haven't had them for a while repair them And then bring them back in onto your own divine line for you, your body, and your team in that whole and healed state and into this current breath of now and beyond. And you're not doing anything. I want you to turn your mind off. This is not for your ego. This is not for your brain. Your energy self knows. There you go. Knows how to do it. Once you let go, you feel that? Once you let go of having to do it, it all starts to come in this is what we talked about once you let go let it go into that higher dimension there's another aspect of you that knows how to do this work there it goes then it comes in Ooh, there we go activate that freedom code within all systems levels components and aspects of your body your being and your team to the degree that you so choose <clears throat> activating all spiritual lessons updating and repatterning all your identity grids your personality grids all ways in which you perceive and are perceived in the world deep breath in shake it out or take a minute to settle it in i tend to move fast when i do these and don't allow people to chill so take a minute to chill maybe take three deep breaths anchor that in tell me in the comments what you felt what you experienced a lot of people who are new at this, you might feel like a shaking in your body. You might feel tingling, spacey, a wooziness, suddenly dizzy. These are all normal when we recalibrate energy. How did you do? Thoughts?
Stephanie felt some heat, vibrations, gold letters, and symbols pouring down into my fields. Yes, um, those gold letters I'm hearing, yeah, what is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is light language. Um, when they, they're almost like symbols, they're like letters and symbols, and they're really shiny and they make no sense. Is that the kind that you're talking about, Stephanie? Let me know. I think that is um, light language. I'm getting a yes. You, yes. Okay. So, oh, I got total chills. Yes. Light language. So you had like light language activations coming through as well. That is so amazing. That is so amazing. Jennifer says, my spirit is delighted. Oh, that is, yeah, it's a huge, freedom is huge, especially on this planet. Um, she says, her shoulder shifting and lots of yawning. Yes, so yawning, this is perfect. Yawning, ooh, I get total chills. <laughs> um, you're very welcome, Stephanie. Yawning is um, the way the body resets its vagus nerve in its central nervous system. It is a reset. Um, so allow yourself to, your body to kind of yawn that in. You're just resetting your system, which is amazing. And the shoulder shifting, that is incredible. Um, I didn't know, I don't know if you have, have had any shoulder pain or not. Um, so you'll have to keep me posted on that. Okay, so this is the example of using a higher realm to create for 2023 you don't have to use your brain stress yourself out stress out your nervous system you know stress out your body right you don't have to do that you can use another dimension and this is part of what we're going to be doing in our program called Sovereign. It's a group kind of just like this. Group mentoring, teaching you how to use these things, activating specific vibrations that are coming through, how to do it. And then um, it's like a group like this. And then we open the call um, for questions and answers so that you have a little bit of um, group coaching specifically for you. Um, this is twice a month. And then on top of that, we are giving away a bonus, which is one of our signature programs, which is the Shifting into Higher Consciousness program, which teaches you all about the multiple dimensions, your teams, your body divas, all of it. Um, it's a year long program uh, that we we're gifting as well because it blends very well with the Sovereign program. Plus. Uh, every month you would get a Voxer day with me privately. Uh, you just have a Voxer coaching day whenever you choose. You have it. You can use it whenever you want. And we do that every single month for six months. And right now, before January 1st, so I guess it's the next nine, ten, four or five days, it's $550, $555 a month for six months. After January first it's gonna double it's gonna be 1111 per month for six months so if that's something that you want to do this is all about sovereignty this is all about creating such deep alignment with soul that we're not resolutioning things we're not redoing things we're creating we are creators we are manifesting, we are creating, we are constantly living in the outcome. We are releasing the attachments to anything, having to show up in any particular way that our ego does or wants rather, and allowing ourselves to come into such great alignment with our own inner being that we live in this space of expansion and freedom um that is how that is how we are going that is how we are moving into 2023 so if you think that that is something that you want to do please message me let me know we will hook you up we start january 6th um jennifer says no 
uh, shoulder problems, but it's where I carry my anger and frustration. And she says, I thought my word for 2023 was believe, but it's not. It's freedom. I love that. Freedom. Freedom for everyone. <laughs> Party favors. <laughs> so just to give you that idea, that freedom activation, you were able to tangibly experience in your own body. I did not do anything to you. Nothing. I sent you the energetic information. I embodied that code within me and you empathically reacted in your own field as we gave you the instructions on how to do it for yourself. There's no need to have to do it all alone when you have a multiverse of possibilities and resources to access. So thank you everybody for joining me for this new year's creation masterclass. Um, let me know how things shift for you. I hope you enjoyed it. I would love to hear your feedback in the comments after you've experienced it. Let us know. And again, reach out if you have any questions about any of our programs. We look forward to seeing you soon. You're so very welcome, Stephanie. Thank you so much for joining live. Have a great holiday and a happy new year, you guys. Wishing you much love in the new year. It's good to see you too, Jennifer. Have a great day. Bye-bye.